well. This module has most certainly been heavy. I'm sure by now you may have already been planning on listening back to some of the videos. Don't worry if it feels a little overwhelming. Once you do this once or twice, you'll understand everything for the rest of your selling career. To finish out this module, I want to talk about some of the timeliness associated with importing your items. My intention is not to give you any hard and fast rules, rather it's to give you an idea of what's normal so that you know what to expect from your first to your 50th shipment. I already talked about the process in detail earlier, so I'm not going to go through this step by step again. Instead, I simply want to add some timelines in here for you, both for air and sea freight. Adding up this timeline makes up what I call your lead time, that is, how long it takes to get an item into stock from time of order to arrival into Amazon. As you grow your business, your lead times will become more and more important as you manage multiple SKUs globally. Let's take a look at the air freight timeline first of all. As you can see here, day one begins the order. You'll inform the freight forwarder about the order on that same day, allowing them plenty of time to get you a quote for the shipment, as well as advising you on what the best shipping method will be for the order. By day two, your deposit should be sent to the supplier. Remember, the supplier dictated this to you when they gave you their payment terms. This enables the beginning of production. Production should end on approximately day 35, depending of course on the size of the order. You'll then pay the order's balance on day 36. When the supplier receives this, they'll release the goods on approximately day 38. By day 45, your items should have been collected and transported to the airport. By day 55, the items should have been shipped by air and have arrived into the destination country. The goods should then clear customs by day 60. The freight forwarder would have had you pay the appropriate customs charge by then, as well as any import taxes. You could then expect arrival into Amazon by approximately day 74 using this method. Let's look at the sea freight timeline. As you can see, everything is quite similar except for the fact that the shipping of the items takes quite a bit longer. In fact, the goods will only arrive into the destination by approximately day 88, getting them into customs by approximately day 98. This would then have the items into stock in Amazon by day 112 after being prepped by delivery in the freight hub. Now, it's important to note that these timelines will vary. However, these will give you a good indication as to how long you can expect shipping and arrival into FBA to take. It's better to simply accept these times and plan for them rather than trying to expedite things any further. That leads to errors and hidden costs, which all eats away at your profits. Certainly, it may take time. However, you must remember, we are doubling our money for every time we make a sale. Despite the time it takes, you can still become very wealthy doubling your money every time you sell something. Let's talk about what happens to finalize a shipment and then finish out the module. So once your items are released after you pay the supplier, you'll receive the bill of lading. The bill of lading is a document issued by the carrier. It acknowledges the receipt of cargo for shipment and serves as a document of title to the goods. It's an important document so make sure you receive it. Once the item clears customs, the freight forwarder will invoice you the following. Number one is import duties, the percentage of duty applied to the goods plus the cost of shipping. In the UK, you'll pay VAT. VAT is a percentage charged and it's applied to both the cost of the goods and the shipping. Number two, you will pay the sea or air freight charges. And number three, any other relevant fees. Remember, I've already made an allowance for freight charges inside our research process and tool. So don't get too concerned about these fees and that they'll take away from your profit. One thing I will note, however, is that I typically calculate freight at sea freight level because this is ultimately where you want to be in your business. The only thing I can't allow for is duty. The reason is down to the fact that there are many different duty rates. So don't worry too much as generally speaking, duty rates are very low and don't affect your POI very much. But make sure you check the duty rates early on. You should expect about 5% for duties, but again, it depends on the item. For example, never import colouring pencils as they have a 120% duty rate.